Jones, and I'm going to teach you uh, a lesson on piano for piano players that will help players who have learned how to maybe read music, but you were never taught how to read from a chord chart. So I'm going to take you through the process of how to make that transition. First step that we want to do is we want to make sure that we understand inversions. And I apologize if this is uh, something you already know, but I uh, just want to make sure we're on the same page. Like there's a standard C chord, and uh, you want to make sure, I'm at the middle C area by the way, you want to make sure that you know how to play, play that as an inversions, okay? So you take the bottom note, raise it an octave, there's an inversion, then repeat. So take the bottom note, raise it an octave. So you have a root, a first, and a second inversion. And you want to be able to do that um, for major and minor chords. Here's a D minor root position. And I'm going to invert it. So I'm going to go up to there. So I got And then I keep going. So um, you want to be able to play uh, all your uh, chords and inversions. Uh, now, once you have those inversions down, then what you want to do is um, you want to play a chord progression and try to minimize your hand movement. So let's say the song had a C and an F and a G chord. And, and by the way, all the examples I'm going to give you in this video are going to be a key of C major to keep things easy, so we're going to ignore the black keys. I'm going to key of C major to be something a little simple, you know. Um, see how I, I used inversions. So I didn't have to move my hand all over. I'm C, and then this is F second inversion, and a G second inversion. Otherwise, if I play everything in root position, I might do a C like that, and an F like that, and a G like that, and it doesn't always sound as good. You know, it's kind of clunky uh, if you play every chord and you're moving around like that. So. You want to keep the first, so that, that idea of keeping your hand in one neighborhood, I'm going to call that the efficient voicings concept. And we're going to expand on the efficient voicings concept as we proceed. Um, the next step I want you to do is I want to make sure that you know how to uh, play suspended chords. There's two types of suspended chords. First, there's a sus4. I'm playing a C major chord, and what this chord has three notes in it. The first note, right there is the C. Whatever the chord name is, that's note number one. Um, and then we're going to count up the C major scale. So there's a D, that's two, there's E, that's three. So there's a one, there's a three in it, there's four, and there's five. So the one, a three, and a five, um, the first, third, and fifth scale degrees are in this chord. And that's true for any chord. There's a one, three, and a five in, for, for D minor, etc. So uh, for any major chord, we're going to take the third note in root position, that's the note in the middle, and we're going to move it. And by moving it up to uh, up the note number four, we have a sus, a sus chord. It's called, a, it's, the full name is C sus four. But um, uh, you, if you just see C sus, you can assume it's a sus four. So that's a sus four, and you move the third up to the fourth scale degree, and you should be comfortable resolving it. Okay? Uh, you can also take a, a out of a major chord, you can suss it by taking the third and moving it down to the two. Okay, and so that's done a lot too. You'll hear a lot of songs will roll out of the sus two into the triad, which when I say triad, I just mean you know the major chord because right? it's built in thirds. That's what we call it triad. So um, I'm just rolling out of the sus two to the triad. There's the sus four. So uh, you want to get comfortable with that, and you'll, you'll do that with major chords, okay? Um, so you want to be, also you want to be comfortable, so any major chord you can substitute with a sus, well not almost any major chord, there's going to be an exception we'll talk about later, but most major chords you can just substitute them with a sus chord, um, particularly the sus twos, I can substitute any major chord with a sus two. So like I can go to F, instead of playing F triad, I can play the F, F sus two. And same thing with the G. So those are all going to work real nicely if I play the C, F, and G chord progression. There's a sus2. There's my F sus2. And there's a G sus2. For the G with that sus4, it's going to sound really good. That's a sub also, substitution. 
But uh, you can notice I'm moving, I'm, I'm violating that efficient voicings concept. So you want to kind of kind of minimize your movement. So you have to learn how to invert these suspended chords so that we can um, try to keep your hand in one location. So the next thing to do is to practice these sus chords, like C sus2. I'm going to invert it, practice it in version. So take that C and move it up, and it looked like that. Okay. Don't play them like this a lot. Usually sus chord sus chords we tend to play them in. That's an open voicing, meaning it's a wide voicing. I could use that term too, but um, we usually play a closed, some a closed voice, more more closed voicing with sus chords. So, and you'll see that with the next inversion when I take that D and move it up there. And I say it's closed because these two notes are next door. That it's closed. Um, that that's an inversion of a C sus um, two. See right there, but it looks like a G sus four. By the way. We could call it a G sus4, and we would if our bass note was the G. But when our bass note's a C, we're going to think of it as a, it's easier to think of it as a C sus2 inverted than to think of it as a G sus4 over C. So we're just, that's what we're doing, okay? And you're going to repeat that process for, uh, you know, you want to learn how to invert your suspended chords, okay? Um, and if you just want to stick to the key of C for um, this video's purposes, then you want to be able to do that with your C chords. Your F chords, like the F sus2, you can invert that to get that, or I'm going to move it down because that's out of the video range, and there it is in the down range. Um, and you want to learn how to invert those, and um, and then for the G's as well. So once you learn those inversions, then you can try to apply, you can apply C, F, and G again, and you have this freedom with the inversions to try to keep your hand in that. Uh, complying to the efficient voicings concept where you keep your hand in a neighborhood, you know. So like I'm playing a C, the F, and a G, and I can, there's the triad, there's the sus2, there's the sus4, and I'll go to the F, and I'll sus it to 2. I'm not going to make it a sus4 because this F sus4 has a B flat in it. And then, and while, while that will work, it'll, it, you're technically modulating. And I'm trying to keep things simple for the video, so we're going to keep away, stay away from black keys. So you won't hear me sus for the uh, F chord, okay, for the purposes of this video. But it will sound good, and you can do that in the key of C, but you're technically modulating. And then I would go to the G chord. There's my sus2. And maybe I would sus for it. That's an inversion. See? And I had to know those inversions because I'm trying to use the efficient voicings concept and keep my hand in a close range. I don't want to move way up, you know, up or down. I want to keep everything um, in one neighborhood, not simply because I'm being lazy, but because it's going to sound better. All right, so uh, the next uh, thing I want to make you, make you aware of is that with those sus2 chords, um, let's look at this chord more closely for a second. Um, there's note number one, there's note number two, right? There's three, four, and five. It has a one, a two, and a five in the chord, all right? That two, you could play an octave higher. Now, if you play that two an octave higher, there's another num number we would uh, label that. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we could call that a nine, all right? And um, what you'll find is people will take a C chord, and they'll add that D, but they won't play it here. Because then you get these three, it's, it's one thing to play a chord with one half step interval in it, or one whole step interval, but to play it with two consecutive intervals, whole step intervals, it sounds almost like, you know, like doing that. It starts to sound too dissonant. So we're not going to put C, D, and E together like that in the C major chord. But we might take the middle note, the D, and raise it an octave, and that would work like that. That's a stretch for me, so I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna take the C chord and invert it, the first inversion, and then add the, the D on top. Okay. Now that's not a sus two because the third has not been moved. I still have a third of my chord. So instead, we're gonna call this a C major add nine, and we're counting. We're calling that D a nine instead of a two. And by calling it a nine, it just emphasizes in our mind that we're we're actually um, playing it higher in a high range as opposed to down here by the uh, the three okay so 
that's why we call it a, uh, add nine. And this is the most common inversion you'll play for it. You'll play a C major first inversion or any major chord first inversion, and you'll add the nine to the top. Okay, that's typically how you'll find yourself playing it. Um, you could do it like that. I mean, that doesn't sound. The dissonance doesn't sound as bad to me when it's as high. It just it gets a little muddy when it gets a little lower, maybe. Um, especially down there. So um, I'm going to make you aware of the add nines. If, if, if that's too complicated, the point to keep it simple is that um, when you see an add nine chord, it's very similar to sus two, and you can substitute one for the other. And um, just like I told you, you can take a major chord and you can turn it into a sus two. Well, you can also take a major chord and you can make it an add nine. Okay, so that's another substitution for you. All right, keep all this stuff in the back of your mind. These are options that we're going to need when we follow that efficient voicings concept and play through a chord progression. Uh, but before um, we get heavier into chord progressions and we're going that direction, um, I want to share something about minor chords. With minor chords, let's take a D minor. Um, you can actually take a D minor and you can substitute it with any minor seven. And um, to find a minor seven, go up an octave from your your uh, root of the chord and drop the that octave we call that note number eight drop it a whole step and you have a seven so anytime you think see a minor chord whether it's a D minor or any, an E minor or A minor which is all you would see in a key of C you can uh, substitute it with a minor seven so if I see an E minor uh, I'm sorry there's a minor seven and an A minor has this G on top for a minor seven um, so um, uh, you want to learn how to play these minor sevens in inversions too. Since there's four notes and in minor seven, you're going to have four inversions. So there's the first inversion. There's your second inversion that should look like a C chord with a six on top, and that's a rule for you. A minor seven is the same as a C major six. I don't want to complicate things though and give you a headache. So I'll keep going. Although some of you, I'm sure, are very sharp, and that's that's a piece of cake for you. There's the next version. So you want to invert these minor sevens as well and be comfortable with those, okay? Uh, so these are, when I keep telling you, you know, you want to memorize these inversions, these are practice points. This is, these are points where you might want to stop the video. Um, you might want to practice it for hours, you know, maybe weeks, <laughs> come back to this video, and then move on. Because um, it doesn't. you don't learn these, these inversions overnight if uh, they're, they're new to you. If they're old to you, then you're just probably waiting for me to get to the next step, and uh, that's coming very, very soon. First of all, uh, before I do, uh, the, uh, go into, um, I'm wanting to take you into uh, the number system in a second, and that gets us into chord progressions, but i got to say one more thing about the minors. Um, the, going back to the sus chords, uh, we don't gen generally think of suspending a major chord, but I mean minor chord, but you really can. I can play an A sus too and roll it into a minor. Like that, so like uh, I could. There's a. Uh, that's as Jesus cold as ice. You ever heard that song? I think it does that. It sus two and rolls it into the uh, minor. So you can also apply uh, the sus chords to the uh, around the minors. Okay, you can roll into the minor. You know, like a D minor. Again, make sure you're comfortable with inverting those. Uh, nice little roll in it. Or, um, sorry, that's my cat. <laughs> um, here's a minor seven, by the way, and I might add that little uh, extra sus two in there. Or there's a sus four in it in the minor, and I'm rolling it out to the minor seven first inversion, which D minor seven first inversion looks like an F major six. Okay, um, now the number system. I've got to share the number system to you. This gives you a context for everything I'm showing you. Songs give you a context too, but uh, the number system, and the number system is more abstract, but I want you to learn this concept because concepts will take you farther than any one song. Because some people say, well, how does this apply? How do I apply this stuff? Teach me a song. Um, and I'm showing you this stuff in a the context of music theory because it's more efficient. This will, this will, it takes a little more work, but it, it'll make you learn quicker. Okay, so hang with me. What we're going to do is in the key of C major, um, the one and the four, we can number the chords in the key of C major. Okay, so if, since I'm in the key of C major, C is one. Okay, and uh, I can count up from there. So there's note number one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then it starts over at one again or eight, but we'll just call that, we'll only go up to seven, so we'll call this second C uh, the eight, the uh, one again. So I can build chords off of those numbers. So uh, uh, the one chord is a C major chord, not because I'm in the key of C. The two chord is going to be a D. It, the only question is, is it major or minor, okay? And it's going to be minor. In the, num in the number system, uh, the two chord is always minor, all right? So you're going to memorize these things. The three chord is going to be minor. Uh, note on what I'm doing is I'm not ignoring the black keys and I'm just playing every other white key, okay? I'm playing that white key on the third note of the C scale. Skip that one, add that one. Skip that one and add that one. And it's naturally a minor chord because E major is here for the black key and it's sharp. So uh, the three is going to be minor. Four is major. Five is major. Six is minor. Okay? So uh, now I'll cover second, uh, seven in a second. But that's one through six. And uh, another way to think of it is just group them together. One, four, and five are major. Those, so those are your three major chords. Okay? And your minors are two, three, and six. So you got... Okay? I, I just played them kind of fast. but And then I inverted the A minor. I could have played it root. Okay? So those, you want to memorize those. Now, what? Nope, the chord number seven, which people teach it to be diminished... And technically, I mean, I mean, in theory, that's correct, but um, in practice, you'll probably never play it that way. Um, I mean, when's the last time I played a song? I did like a descending chord progression from one to seven, and did this C major, and then we go to the seven and do a diminished. That's a nasty sound. And then drop it to six and keep dropping. I'm just dropping numbers, okay? Instead, what it'll do is it'll play for chord number seven. You're gonna play the bass note's still seven. That's not a question. I'm, I'm, I'm playing a B down here. Um, but the um, the chord, um, instead of playing a, a diminished, what you're going to play is a 5 chord. So um, no, bass note's number 7. The chord's a 5. And uh, so you're going to play a 5 over 7. That's what you, that's the hardest thing about the number system that you want to memorize. Uh, for don't So don't believe people when they say play the diminished chord. Instead, play a 5 over 7. I say 5 over 7, it means 5, there's the 5 chord, and there's the 7 bass, okay? So, you know, so a, chord, a descending chord progression, jumping down the numbers, 1, 7, 6, 5, 4, etc., would do something like uh, rolling into the sus2, see? And there's a 5 over 7, and then there's a 6, and there's my, I'm rolling the sus2 into it, and then that's a... Uh, that's actually a 1 over 5. Sorry about that. If I do it, I keep it simple. Play a sus4, and then I'll resolve it. That's a 5 chord. There's a 4 chord. There's a 5 chord. There's a 6. 5 over 7. See, it sounds a lot better than doing that. So that doesn't sound good. That diminished. So chord number 7, you need to remember. 5 over 7. And that, okay? So uh, this number system is will slow you down initially because it makes you think in two realms. You're thinking chord letters, and and then you're counting. So um, I, I've got to think G major, and that's the what uh, in the key of C, C D E F G. It's the fifth chord in the key of G. It'll slow you down initially, but over the long run, it'll speed you up and give you more knowledge. And by the way, a shortcut in my mind is I'm in the key of C, so I visualize the C chord. And I know that's notes one, three, and five. So when I play the G chord, because I had this mental picture going on, I could uh, tell myself, "Oh, it's a five chord." Okay, um, whatever, whatever you need to do. But the point is that you can use the piano uh, and your imagination to uh, visualize the number system, which is pretty cool. All right. Um, so you're gonna learn that number system and practice it. You can practice it going up in roots in the root voicings one two three four five six and the most popular song I know that does that uh, is uh, it's actually in a different key but I see um, lean on me um, I see so, no it doesn't, it doesn't do that. ignore that B flat <laughs> kind of does that. I'm sorry, I digress a little bit. But um, just practice the number system. Take a song you know that you don't have to think about, uh, and uh, as you play through the song, ask, uh, make sure that you're thinking, and not just in terms of the chords you're playing, but the numbers. So, um, you know, that, that'll help you to, to 
think in terms of the number system. And there's several advantages of thinking in terms of the number system, like it helps you to transpose uh, keys and it helps you to see patterns in music you would not otherwise see. But we're going to use it as a, a framework to help us practice and because it's more efficient than learning any one song. Because a song might only have four chords or three chords um, and not use all these chords. But we're going to use every possible chord, at least uh, the simpler chords, that are in, the, in this case, the key of C major as we go through this video and you learn this these, this thing. So uh, the, now what I want to do, taking within the framework of the number system, we're going to apply. We're going to move to the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Playing our chords, but we're going to do something. Um, now we're going to apply what we've already learned with suspended chords and with inversions. And uh, what we're going to try to do is, uh, and we're going to couple that with the idea of the efficient voicings, which means you keep your hand in one neighborhood. And as I move through the numbers, um, let's just work. Let's just do it. That's here's the one chord. I'm going to go to the two chord. Okay. And uh, I can, if I'm going to play with the suspension, I can do that. And let's go to the three chord. Technically, the three chord is a three minor. Here's another thing you might want to remember. It's like the five over seven feel. Um, a lot. 80% of the time, I'd say, instead of playing a three minor, people play a one chord over three. So now I want you to think instead of three minor, one over three. That's the sound you'll hear instead, okay? One chord, which is the C chord, third note is a bass. All right, let's keep going. Um, here's the four chord. I'm suspending it, and I might resolve it. And I'll go to the five chord. I'm sus toing it, and there's a sus four. Here's a six chord. I made it a minor seven and I've inverted it. Okay. Again, you got to practice all that as inversion stuff uh, and know that about that substitution before you can do it. And then uh, chord number seven is a five over seven. You will not want to suspend this to sus four. Well, actually, that well, that's, that's not bad. Sometimes it doesn't work. Okay. But that, that's not bad. And then the sus two works and then I'm back. Okay. And I played through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, keeping my hands in one location, one neighborhood. That's the efficient voicings concept. And I used the suspensions and the inversions to help me do that and to make things sound better. All right, now what I want to do is I want to do the same thing, but one little extra caveat, and this is going to just be icing on the cake and make it sound even better. What you want to do is you want to keep the first note of the scale, which is a C, and the fifth note of the scale, for whatever key you're in, you're going to do this, but in this case, we're in the key of C. The first and fifth notes are C and G. And I want to try to keep those notes on top of my chord voicings. So I want to try to keep these notes on top. And my knowledge of the suspended substitutions, the minor seven substitutions, and inversions are going to help me do that. Okay, so I need to leverage all that. And I'm going to do it within the concept of number system. So C chord already does that. Okay, I'm playing it as with four notes repeating the octave, but I could play it first inversion if I prefer. Now I'm going to go to the two chord. The two chord has the C in there if I make it a minor seven. Okay, if I just play the normal D, it doesn't do it. But if I make it a minor seven, it'll work. Now I can temporarily throw that G in if I suspend it, like uh, like I was doing earlier. Okay, so I can get the G in there, but I can't keep it in there, and that's fine. I'm just trying to, as much as possible keep these two notes in the chords, and I am getting in there just briefly with the suspension. Now the three chord. Here's why we play the three chord as you play a three chord as minor, you got the G in there. If you make it a one over three, like I just told you earlier, there's your, now you got both those notes in there, the first and fifth. By the way, these first and fifth notes, we're calling them the train tracks. And that's a con uh, phrase I get from Paul Balash. He calls this concept the train tracks concept. Um, Google Paul Balash. Um, so um, we're one over three. I'm keeping those notes. The four chord, that's the F chord. If I just play a normal F, I got the C in there, but I'm going to get the G in there, so I'm going to turn it into a sus2, and there it is. I can roll out of it, or I can keep it sus2. It just depends on what I, what I like and how the song's moving. Now let's uh, go to the 5 chord. That's a G chord, and I want to try to keep, you know, put the, if I uh, want to put that C in there, I can do that if I make it a sus4. I'm inverted. There's a sus4. You've already practiced the suspended chords and you've learned how to invert them. So this is not new to you, right? If you 
you're not shaking your head yes, then you haven't practiced enough to be at the point you're at in this video yet. Okay, there you go. And I might resolve it. That's fine. I can resolve it. I don't have to keep the train tracks in every little m moment for the chord progression. Okay, A minor has a C in there, and I'm going to turn it into a minor 7, and now I have the 5. I have the G in there. Okay? Sounds good. Uh, now the 5 over 7 is the next chord. And this one, I, I'm going to try suspending it. I don't always like that sound over the 5 over 7. Uh, it's not bad if I don't stick to it too long. I don't like doing that, but I can resolve it. That's not too bad. I tend not to suspend the 5 over 7 a lot, okay? So uh, the 5 over 7 is the one I would say to be careful about the train track, imposing the train tracks over the voicing is strictly. The other place to be careful is not, not only over a 5 over 7, but a straight 5. Sometimes you don't want the suspended quality in the 5 chord. Sometimes the melody note's there. So that's where you... And if the melody note conflicts with the train tracks, then you know you don't stick to it. The train tracks is a concept you do 80% of the time. So the, now let's say I'm playing through a song, a chord chart, and it says uh, C, F, and G. Now I know how to voice those chords. I'm going to voice them to keep the train tracks in it. And then it goes to five. And maybe I'll resolve it. I like that sound. Let's say it goes to six chord, which is going to make it an A minor seven just to keep the train tracks in there. Let's say it hits back to the four chord. I, I suspend it two to keep these in there. Let's say it hits a two chord. It's a minor seven. And then it say it goes to three. Instead of playing a three minor, I'll play a one over three because of the train tracks. See what's happening? It all sounds it sounds wonderful, doesn't it? There's those train tracks, and what you saw me do at the end is the last concept I'm going to cover with the video. Actually, second to the last concept. Uh, this is the idea of to, to throw fills into the songs. You simply need to, while playing your chords, you need to be aware of your scale. And the scale that you're thinking of is the scale that's derived from the key signature. So I'm in a key of C major, and there's my scale. Um, so you might, you want, what you might want to do is practice your chords, through, going through the number system, and practice adding notes from the scale. Okay, so I can, and the notes don't have to be in that linear straight order, and they don't have to, you don't have to play all seven. Um, I can just do like a C chord, for instance, which is the one, and then maybe have, uh, you know, whatever I want to do. I can invert it. That's nice. I'm playing, just being creative. I'm asking, when I say be creative, what that means is I'm questioning, in this case, questioning a scale. I'm questioning an object. I'm asking, what if? What if I do that? You know, or what if I play different white keys? I don't like that as well, so that's nice. Then I'm going to go to the two chord, and I'm going to add, I'm asking, what if I add, I don't know, this note to the scale? Or, okay? So that's what creativity is. You're questioning the scale. So for every chord I play, I just ask, what if I add, I don't know, those notes to the scale? And it's easy in the key of C because they're all white. myself what if I trill so I'm being creative okay and that's how you learn how to play fills know what, notice what I did there I didn't hold on to the chord I don't have to hold on to the chord because I have a sustain pedal which keeps that chord ringing so I can do that as long as I don't that the melody doesn't get too complicated and it doesn't muddy up uh, last thing and this is kind of a bonus thing um, when you're playing the five chord key of C, so the 5 chord's G. The most common thing to do with it is suspended, by the way. It's sus4. Uh, about every song I ever see suspends the, the 5 chord. They don't always suspend the 1 and the 4 chords, but they'll definitely suspend the 5 chords somewhere. I'm not saying every time, but uh, that's just given, okay? So if you're playing a 1, 4, 5, you, you know... Save the suspension... That's so common that you want to be aware of that. Whenever you think five chord, always know that you know there's a I don't know there's a high probability that you might suspend it. And sometimes the chord chart doesn't tell you it's suspended. You might want to try it anyhow. You might find it works. Um, now to piggyback on that, um, 
you can get a similar suspended, you get a similar sound off that five chord, um, that suspended quality. If instead of playing the five chord, you're going to play a four over five. So that's a, in the key of C, the four chords F, the five bass is G, so four, a F over G. So you, when I play an F over G, it's going to have a suspended quality to it. Hear it? And what I like to do with this is I tend to like to resolve it. You don't have to resolve it, but I'm going to resolve it to the five chord. So I'm going to resolve the F over G to a G. Here it comes. Okay, that's a beautiful sound. Or I might drop down to the other inversion. Back into it if I want, four over five, and then resolve it. Um, one little, one last thing is that four over five. Try making it a major seven. Now you're getting into a little jazzy sound. I love it. Okay, the concepts I've given you will allow you. Now, when you read a chord chart, you're going to know where to put your hands, and you're going to understand your substitution options with them. Like the minors can be substituted with minor sevens. This is the major chords you can substitute with suspendeds, and actually you can even roll those suspendeds into your minors as well. Uh, we said sus two chords are um, uh, like cousins to the uh, add nine, so that's an option for you as well. And you learned all that within the cons with the framework of the number system, and we're trying to apply all this within the. Uh, context of the efficient voicing concept which means that you don't move your hand wide uh, it, you know widely um, and that you're even you're even uh, going to stick to that uh, more strictly if you follow the train tracks idea of voicing the first and fifth notes of your key as the top notes of your chords okay if you follow all that and and read a chart uh, it becomes a lot easier to make it sound good um, there's going to be exceptions, there's different exceptions for different styles of music, for instance. But um, I, about every song, I, about every style I've ever found does tend to uh, stick with some of these concepts, like especially the efficient voicings concept, um, where it doesn't like to, you don't like to move uh, more notes than you have to as you move through a chord progression. So I hope this helps you uh, on your way to learning to move out of the realm of simply reading music, which is a great thing to do, into being able to play uh, from chord charts in a guitar player's world. Uh, keyboard players many times have to do that. So uh, best of luck to you.